Hey everyone, this is Jen and you are watching BPD Woman. On this channel, we talk about borderline personality disorder. If you're living with it, this channel is designed to help you find ways to more effectively manage your emotions, understand them, learn what ineffective behaviors are impeding your way to achieving your goals, using such skills as DBT, emotional regulation, and I'll be sharing with you my insights and personal experiences. I'm not a therapist or life coach, but I am someone who can answer the following question that most of those folks cannot, which is, what is it like to live with borderline personality disorder? I was diagnosed 20 years ago, and ever since then, I have been committed to knowing as much, researching as much, and working on myself as much as possible using things like DBT, of which I've attended about four to six rounds of, which is almost about three years of my life. I have researched um, a plethora of online sources. I have within my library every major text. I have reread every book. I have completed each and every workbook. I seek to improve every day, and I don't think there will ever be a day where I'm done improving. So if that sounds good to you, please hit subscribe in the bell below so you never miss a beat. I produce about three to five videos each week and I would love you to check them out if they are of interest to you. So let's get started. Today I wanted to talk about something that I think most of us with borderline have uh, experienced in one realm or another. I know for me, I have experienced it a lot. And I want to talk today about obsessive rumination or overthinking, worrying, obsessive rumination and borderline personality disorder, three reasons it happens and three ways that we can stop it. If you live with borderline personality disorder, you may find yourself sometimes stuck on a emotional Ferris wheel. When I say the Ferris wheel, or I call the roller coaster of emotions. Those emotions, which we've already described as emotional ability, which is the frequent changing of moods off of a baseline, which feeds into our emotional dysregulation or not being in a wise-minded state where we can be the most effective people that we can, we experience this sudden change of moods and that can sometimes play into worry and obsessive thinking because we're sometimes going into a situations not completely mindfully or distracted. Uh, maybe we're trying to do three, four things at once. Sometimes we look back on something and we're like, wait, what did I say that? What like is that is that the final work project that I turned in? Did I actually even watch that video? Uh, did I miss that episode? And so when we're rushing, when we experience frequent mood changes, sometimes that plays into obsessive worrying and thinking. You'll hear other names for it, catastrophizing. That is a very common cognitive distortion. And that is definitely something that, that Jen here has definitely experienced. Um, I like to think of the worst case, I don't like to. It, it's almost a, um, an unbidden thought, you know? You, you know, you get a, a phone call from your doctor's office and you think it's because they're telling you you have HIV. You don't get a return text from a friend for a few hours and you suddenly think that you're worthless and they don't like you and you will always be alone. You don't get a job interview or you don't get a position offered to you and you imagine that you will never have stable income. You're going to end up on the street. You're going to become a drug addict. You're going to become like your parents, whatever. And this cycle of worry, emotional ability plays into this catastrophizing and obsessive rumination. So rumination is thinking something over and over and over and over again. If you're old enough to remember September 11th as it actually happened, you'll remember that the towers fell over again and over again. They, the news played that over and over and over and over again. And, you know, we had trauma fatigue from seeing it go on so much. And that kind of 
dramatic analogy can be compared to the overplaying of the tapes of the core content uh, of a situation, a interaction, a text we sent, we can worry, we can find ourselves worrying about anything. You know, sometimes if I don't hear back from a friend right away, I start rereading my text thinking, did I, did I say the wrong thing? You know, could I have been more validating in a situation? And the, the key thing to remember here between those of us with borderline and those without is that those of us with borderline have extreme sensitivity and that's a great thing you know we feel deep empathy we feel for others we can see ourselves in other people's shoes we can get in touch with their pain and on the flip side of that since we are very sensitive people we do tend to worry and i want to talk about three reasons why worry and obsessive rumination happens and then i want to talk about three ways to stop it if you have borderline Congratulations, because you have one of the most well-researched, uh, well-written uh, personality disorders out there. You are living with a disorder that has one of the highest remission or recovery rates. There is so much known about borderline. There are so, even from five years ago, there are so many more online, in-person resources and classes available. So it's all personality disorder is, is a an ingrained maladaptive pattern of thinking and behaving and you have learned this thinking and behaving 18 to 20 years growing up and so it's going to take you twice as long or another 20 to 40 years to, to get yourself out of that now I hope those numbers don't scare you but you didn't get this disorder overnight you didn't learn these behaviors overnight and you're not going to change everything overnight it's going to be incremental so Remember that shade of gray, not that black and white thinking. You'll make some progress, you'll falter, you'll make some progress, but steadily you will make some progress. So one of the reasons that's postulated why we overthink is because when we feel that we are overthinking something and replaying it, you know, how am I going to handle, how am I going to handle this situation if my boss it calls me in to fire me, right? You, you may play out what you're going to say, if you're going to clean out your desk that morning, you know, if your girlfriend's going to break up with you, you may think about, you know, what you're going to say in order to get her back. And you're, maybe you'll replay all of the things that you've done recently that have pushed that person away from you. By overthinking something, by constantly repeating it over and over, we think that in turn, we are solving the problem. You know, the more that we think on it, the more that we uh, obsess over it, we somehow think that we're going to be able to see a clear option play out. You know, I'll do this with my calendar each night. Like, I'll look at my calendar for what's going to happen for the next day, and I'll be like, all right, I got to do this, and I got to do that, and like, oh, what if I don't get this done? And like, ah, oh, this is, this is closing it on this time. And I'll, I'll like be ruminating about my schedule for the next day, and I'll be like, all right, you just got to put this phone down. Like, look, you'll just get done what you're going to need to get done. Now, that takes time. But five, 10 years ago, I would look at that calendar and the more that I would look at it, sometimes days and weeks out at a time, I'd think, oh, well, I'll, this, this helps me prepare for what's coming up by worrying about everything that's on my schedule, how I'm gonna handle it. I better game play everything right now. I wasn't living in the present, right? I was worrying about things that were gonna happen because I thought by doing so, I would be able to solve an upcoming problem. The reality of the matter is, is that the obsessive thinking and worrying helped me none to little, you know? Oftentimes I would waste time by worrying about something that, you know, I would replay like, all right, this is the conversation I'm gonna have with this person if they say this and then I'll say that and then they'll say this, right? And then that conversation would like never come to light, you know? I would be completely off in my interpretation of why a person was interacting with me a certain way, or I would be completely misread about thinking a item on my calendar was gonna be more stressful than usual. So we think, first reason that we obsess is we think that we'll be able to work on a problem if we continue to think about it and keep it in the front of our mind. The second reason that we obsess and that we worry so much is that we feel fear, you know, we feel fear and don't forget, we feel things a little bit more intensely than the average person. And it takes us longer because of that emotional ability to come down back to our 
regulated or wise mind baseline. Therefore, because of this fear and the trauma that we grew up with, we're kind of a little bit more on a state of alert, right? It's called hypervigilance, the always looking over your shoulder, the always having a contingency plan, always having a backup plan, you know, uh, you know, if you live in a kind of a dicey area, you know, you'll route maybe where you're going to walk the dog at night compared to where you might not walk the dog at night. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing that. There's nothing wrong with safety and, and feeling yourself protected. But when it begins to become more obsessive and you, you can't stop being on edge, you can't stop being on alert, it's called hypervigilance. And those with post-traumatic stress disorder often report symptoms that are very similar to hypervigilance. By the way, speaking of hypervigilance and post-traumatic stress disorder, which group of people do you think have the highest prevalence of post-traumatic stress disorder? Like if you were to think of one group of people, profession, age, gender, sex, that experience PTSD the most frequently and the most affected about it, what would you think your answer might be? I bet some of you are thinking uh, service member, police officer, military personnel. And the answer is children, children. And think about a four-year-old's brain compared to a 25-year-old soldier's brain, right? The 25-year-old soldier has at least had some, hopefully, some time in their childhood develop a healthy sense of coping skills and they didn't live in a state of fear or trauma. They weren't subjected to arguing abuse in unstable environment. I was, I was, and the likelihood of uh, those of us living with borderline personality disorder is high. If you have the disorder, you've most likely experienced some kind of ongoing pattern of abuse growing up. So number two, we feel fear a lot of the time and that plays into that worry. What's going to happen next? The third uh, reason why we worry so much is sort of ties into number two and that is that we have trouble with managing our moods. We have that emotional ability and we experience a great deal of anxiety and you know, anxiety and fear, they're pretty close on, on the uh, genealogy chart, you know. We have a general discontent. We grew up in an unstable environment. And so even sometimes when nothing's wrong, we may feel like something's wrong. You know, I, I, I would have therapists say, well, perhaps you're worrying because there's nothing to worry about. It sounds silly, but yes, because that state of worry felt very normalized to me and it might to you as well. The worrying, the looking over the shoulder, the being ready to be on guard and keep yourself safe, which is what you had to learn how to do when you were younger to keep yourself alive and emotionally okay. You had to be on guard. You had to be that, that child soldier protecting yourself. So it's hard to put that down. And don't beat yourself up if you can't put it down for five, 10 years. That's just a part of recovering, but it is possible. So let's talk about three ways to make it stop. So those are the three ways, the three reasons why we ruminate. We are tend to overthink because we think we can solve the problem by doing so. We feel a lot of fear and we have that core content and hypervigilance and traumatic stress playing into it. And the third reason is that we have a generally unstable feeling and anxiety that's been ingrained in us. Three ways to make it stop. When I find myself worrying about something, now, I, listen, I didn't, I wasn't always so great at this. This took a long time. And there are still times where I catch myself going off onto that like worry train. And I'm like, oh no, the worry train's leaving the station. Like, let me get back, let me get back to myself. The first thing that I recommend to try to make that worry stop is distraction. And the more involved you can be in the activity that you're about to be distracted in, the better. For instance, watching a movie. Uh, foreign language films are my favorite go-to uh, for distraction or if I want to be fully mindful and minded in a, in a moment. It's hard to read subtitles and look at look at a film and, and do anything else but that and not miss something in the movie unless you speak the language. By reading the text of the movie, by looking at you know the actors and their expressions, Give it about 10 minutes. See if you're still able to worry about that. 
Um, it could be going for a jog. It'd be calling a friend. I like to watch comedy videos on my phone. There are any distraction that works for you. The point is, though, the way that it works is you have to be fully committed to it. And after the first 15, 20, 30 minutes, hopefully enough time will go by that you've given yourself some distance from this worry and you'll be able to more wise-mindedly think about a solution to your potential problem. Number two, a second way to make the rumination stop is to give a different interpretation of events. You know, oftentimes we get very solo focused on on explaining to ourselves why something is the way it is, right? He didn't return my call because he hates me. I didn't get the promotion at work because they think I am late to work too often. Um, my apartment manager doesn't like me and I know that because he never says hi to me, okay? We get locked in onto one interpretation of events. Something that's helpful, that's been helpful to me to make rumination stop is to reinterpret the event, right? Come up with several other explanations and even writing them down uh, can be useful. And if you have the DBT app, try writing it down in, in, in the DBT app or a diary card or anything. Just get it down on paper. What are some other reasons to explain this worry that I have, right? Perhaps the apartment manager doesn't say hi to me because he's been really sick lately and he's feeling really run down. Perhaps you didn't get the promotion at work because there's just someone a little bit more senior than you, right? Perhaps the doctor's office hasn't called back because they just don't have the results back and it's not because they're trying to um, delay telling you you have cancer, right? Perhaps your friend hasn't texted you back right away because their phone's on do not disturb or they thought they drafted the text but they forgot to send it. I can't tell you how many times I've done that, right? Like I think I've replied but I haven't and then I look back 10 hours later I was like, oh my God, I haven't sent that text. Think about some other interpretations to your worry. It will help give you a broader picture and instead of becoming more narrow-minded, it'll help you to become more broad-minded and that's the, that's the goal. The third thing that I recommend to get out of rumination is self-validation, which simply means telling yourself that no matter what happens, you can handle it, like you got this, right? I think about the childhood I grew up in. I think about some of the experiences that I've overcome. Listen, I've never been without a roof over my head, enough money in the bank, and a, a way to support myself, even though there have been times when I didn't think it was going to happen, you know, even though there were times where I didn't have a job, even though there were times I didn't have any emotional support or healthy coping mechanisms, or that I didn't have a DBT or, or a, a therapist or whatever, right? I tell myself, you can handle anything that comes your way. Tell yourself that. Say it out loud. Another thing to tell yourself is that how likely, or ask yourself, how likely is this worry to come true, right? Do I think I really have cancer? Do I really think my friend is never going to talk to me again? How many times does your worry actually come true? Keep a tally. It can kind of help keep it in perspective. Well, this has been um, Obsessive Rumination and BPD, three reasons why it happens and three ways to stop it. And I will link up... Um, with you soon on some DBT skills and a final mindfulness DBT video. As always, I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, tell me what you think. If you have ideas for a video or questions, please uh, send them my way. Until we talk again, thank you so much and be effective in whatever you do. Bye-bye.